Hi, I'm Jim with Stickley on Security, and today we're going to be talking about what to do when you're the victim of identity theft. Now, the first time you receive a bill in the mail of something you didn't actually purchase, or you receive a phone call from a collection agency for something you have no idea what they're talking about, or you get a charge on your credit card statement that you didn't make, immediately you start getting upset. You go, this isn't something I purchased, I'm not paying for that. You've got to take a deep breath and remember, whoever has sent you this bill, whoever is doing these collections, has no idea that you didn't make this purchase. As far as they know, you did make this purchase, and they're just trying to get their money. So you've got to remember that they're not trying to be malicious, they're not trying to be mean to you, they're just trying to get money that they believe is owed to them. So instead of freaking out and getting upset with them, take a deep breath, get a pen and a piece of paper, and follow these steps that I talk about today, and you will get your identity back, and you won't end up having to cover a lot of costs. Now oftentimes it's going to start when you receive a bill in the mail for something you've never purchased. So what you need to do is look at the bill and find out the contact number. Call the organization up and explain to them you received the bill and that this isn't you. You didn't make this purchase and you don't intend on paying this purchase. They're going to be ready to deal with this. Identity theft is running rampant. You will not be the first person that they've ever talked to. So what you need to do is you need to find out who do you need to talk to. And they'll generally transfer you to that department. Once you go to the right department, you explain to them what's going on, you tell them your name, you tell them what's on the bill. They're generally going to have steps that you have to go through to get this resolved. Now sometimes it's a lot of steps. Write them all down, document everything. Also write down who you spoke with, what time you spoke with them, and if there's any follow-up that you're supposed to be doing. Also, if they will give you a direct dial back to that person you're dealing with, that's really helpful so you can deal with the same person over and over and over. Oftentimes, you're not going to get that lucky and each time you have to call, you're going to have to start over from scratch on explaining what's going on. But if you can get a contact number of a direct person to deal with, it really makes things go a lot faster. Now, if you're in a situation where somebody's stolen your checkbook and they're writing checks against your account, the first thing you need to do is notify your financial institution that this is going on. Now, in some cases, people will just try to put a stop payment on the checks that they know. So they go, oh, well, my checkbook had checks 1 through 100. I'll put a stop payment on those, and then those checks won't be able to be used. The problem is that if a criminal has your checkbook, they have all the information they need to go out and have more checks made, and they can put any number they want on those checks. So just stopping the check number isn't enough. You're going to actually have to have that account changed out and create a new account number. I realize this is going to be more work for you because then you have to deal with things like if you have direct bill pay or if you have people doing automatic transfers out of your account every month, you're going to have to notify all those third-party vendors that now your account number has changed. Also, you need to make sure you get a letter from your financial institution. You're going to need something that states, hey, there's fraudulent activity going on in this account. This is what they're aware of. These checks have been written document as much as they can in this letter from the financial institution. And the reason you're going to want that is because all these organizations that have these bounced checks coming into them now, they're going to be coming to you saying, you owe us money, you bounced a check. That letter that you have, you're going to be able to give to them saying, see, this is not me. And it's going to help you in that process of dealing with identity theft. If you're in a situation where you are dealing with identity theft, make sure you go and pull a credit report. A lot of times people think, oh, I've got this one bill collector coming after me, so that's all I'm dealing with. And in reality, there could be a lot more transactions going on in your account that you're not aware of. By getting a credit report, you can see everything that's on your credit report right now to see if anything else has been opened up. There might be other credit cards, there might be loans, who knows what it is. You want to be aware of that. Now, you can get a free credit report by going to www.annualcreditreport.com. Again, that's www.annualcreditreport.com. And they will offer you one free credit report from each of the big three reporting agencies, which is TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. So make sure you pull at least one credit report to take a look at it and make sure that there's no other things on there that you should be dealing with. Anytime you're dealing with identity theft, make sure you file a police report. Now, there's two types of police reports. There's a standard police report, and then there's an identity theft police report. Make sure you file an identity theft police report. And it is different. And the reason you want to do that is because when you're dealing with identity theft, there's going to be a lot of organizations out there that are going to want to see an identity theft police report. So go down and go in person. Sometimes they'll let you file them online or they'll let you file them over the phone. I highly recommend doing it in person. You'll get a lot more information out of it. You'll learn a lot more and you'll be able to work with them to make sure you put everything you need in this police report. Once you have a identity theft police report, 
make sure you file a credit freeze with each of the big three reporting agencies. And again, those reporting agencies are Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. And you can find online what their websites are, and you can go to their websites and it will show you how you can contact them to file a credit freeze. Now, the reason you want the police report is because once you have an identity theft police report, you can put this credit freeze on at no charge to you and it will last for seven years. This is really, really important because once you have a credit freeze, it will then require a PIN for anybody to be able to access your credit information. So therefore, people won't be able to get a new credit card, open up a loan, you know, buy a car, anything like that using your information without having this PIN. So it's really, really important that you do this step. Once you feel you're actually getting somewhere and you're getting resolution with an organization, make sure you get something in writing from that organization. You don't want to be on a phone with them and they tell you, yeah, everything's great, everything's been taken care of, and you have nothing else to prove that. Every single person you talk to that tells you, yes, this has been addressed and this has been taken care of, tell them you need something in writing. And I prefer an actual letter in the mail, not just an email, but a letter in the mail that states the organization name, whatever the issue was, when it was resolved and that it, there is nothing left pending. And the reason you want that is because so many times a creditor will come to you and they'll say, yes, everything's been resolved. And you go, fantastic. And then a year later, you run a credit report and it shows still on your credit report. And you go, wait a minute, this was resolved a year ago. Why is it still on my credit report? And it's just because even though you've resolved it with them, they never actually filed anything with the credit reporting agencies to get it taken off of your credit. So then you're going to have to jump through some more hoops and have it taken off yourself. And if you have that letter, you can submit that letter and that'll be enough to get it resolved. Now, the bad news here is if your identity has been stolen, and it's related to your social security number. Let's say they stole your social security number and opened up a new account somewhere. Just because you resolve this issue today and once you get it all taken care of, doesn't mean you're out of the woods. And the reason is that your social security number stays with you for life. So if I'm a criminal and I've stolen your social security number and I know your name and your information, I can use that today. Then you go out and you clean it all up and you get it all taken care of. Well, me being the criminal, I still have that information. I might sit on it six years, seven years, maybe eight years. And in eight years time, I still have your social security number. I still have the information I need. I can go out and commit identity theft again under your information. And, uh, and the problem is, it's not like this is gonna change. So you need to be aware of this and you need to remain diligent from this point forward. So if your identity was stolen today and it was related to your social security number, from today forward, you are gonna to need to change the way you live your life. You're going to need to make sure you're checking your credit report about every three months and making sure nothing wacky and new is showing up on there that you don't expect. And you're gonna to need to do this from now on. Now, most people get a little bit lazy over time. You know, if your house was robbed today, I guarantee you tomorrow your house becomes Fort Knox. However, two years from now, you're back to leaving your garage door unlocked when you run down to the store and you're back to just doing silly things that you wouldn't have done a day after you were robbed, but you just kind of forget about it. With identity theft, it's the same thing. So many times people just start to forget about it after a couple years time. And they go, oh, it was all cleaned up, it's finally back to normal, and they move on with their lives. You need to realize that that's not good enough. You're gonna have to be diligent for the rest of your life, and that social security number will not change for the rest of your life, so be aware. Cleaning up your credit report and your credit history when you become a victim of identity theft is always a hassle. You're going to have to jump through a lot of hoops. You're going to have to do a lot of documentation. You're going to have to send in a lot of things via mail. It's going to be work and it's just kind of how it is. On the plus side, every organization has dealt with identity theft now. They have procedures in place and they know exactly what they're going to do with each person. So all you have to do is listen to what they say, jump through their hoops and give them what they need and you're going to get through this. Make sure you don't just let it go on. Don't just go, oh well, I'll deal with it later. The longer you wait, the worse it's gonna get and the more difficult it will be to get it off of your record. So if you see something, deal with it immediately and get it resolved. As always, spend a little time and do a little research and protect yourself. So in this case, you overcome being a victim of identity theft. I'm Jim for Stickley on Security. Have a great day.